The Dan market has shrank significantly, so it is hard to find a vehicle that gets great MPGs. It's a fun to drive. Today, Moss Nissan has given us the 2022 Nissan Altima SR Deep Blue Pearl. The VC turbocharged engine is definitely going to be a more sporty, dynamic drive. The interior is going to have the room to fit everyone, plus your family, with the technology, with rivals like the Honda Accord, the Toyota Camry, the Hyundai Sonata. In this segment, there's a lot of vehicles still out there that's backing the performance, giving that sporty drive with that luxury and the room for everyone to fit. But which one's going to be best for you? Honda, Toyota, Hyundai? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm going to go over all the specs and details starting now. Ultima is going to start off with a V-Motion grill. For 2023, this is going to be reworked, and because it's the SR, you're going to get gloss black all over instead of the chrome treatment. So that will be a little bit more sporty look as well into the front, but I do like that we have the chrome and the gloss black that goes right into your LED headlamps, daytime runnings, and your fog lamp assembly because it still gives an aggressive look. It's going to be wider than the Toyota. Everybody else that I'm comparing it to, it's going to be smaller. And for the hood, I like how it goes into the A pillars and then the line segments that go underneath the windows that's with the chrome treatment. And in the back to finish it, the diffuser with the metallic gray in between your dual exhaust outlets. So it keeps that sporty heritage and that's exactly what you're looking for in the SR. As a comparison to Honda, Toyota, or Hyundai, the Ultima sits with a little bit of a luxury slash sport style. 19 inch wheels, these are alloy. You got the gloss black in between it, multi-spoke, so it does stand out from the crowd. Four wheel independent suspension, intelligent ride control, intelligent trace control, sport tuned suspension for the Hyundai Sonata inline. This is going to not be as powerful as that. So the Honda Accord, it's going to be about the same, what you're gonna see in the drive. This is going to be longer than the Toyota Camry at 192.9 inches, a wheelbase at 111.2 inches. It's going to be shorter than the Honda and the Hyundai. I do like that we have the chrome that's going on the bumper. So that way when you're putting things into your cargo, which you'll see in a second, you're not gonna scratch the paint and you're gonna go inside to 15.4 cubic feet. This is going to be more than the Toyota Camry. You're gonna get storage underneath the floor. The rear bench split folds at a 60-40 split that's gonna max the cargo. This is the VC turbocharged 2.0 liter, which I know it doesn't have 300 horsepower, but we do need to hear that sound. Let's go inside, start it up so we can hear the exhaust then. The new Nissan Ultima SR has the styling cues and this blue color really does stand out. I wish that we had the Midnight Edition to just complement it because I think the exterior elements being gloss black would just really set a more sharper sporty image and they back the performance of the 2.0 liter VC turbocharged inline four cylinder producing 236 horsepower at 267 pound feet of torque that's paired to an Xtronic CVT transmission achieving 25 to 34 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 around 5.8 seconds with a quarter mile at 14.3 seconds. It's not going to be the fastest in the segment. It's not going to be necessarily the slowest either, so it will stay up to par. The Honda and Toyota will beat it, especially if you get the V6 Toyota, it's gonna beat it by about two tenths of a second on zero to 60, which is not necessarily that bad considering you're gonna have a savings of probably five to near $7,000 with this engine and you still get the sporty dynamic suspension plus the sporty ride, which you're gonna see in a second. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Nissan Ultima SR. As we go into the interior, go over the tech 
and take this for our test. Entering run. inside the Nissan Ultima SR, you're going to receive 39.2 inches of headroom, 43.8 inches of legroom, zero gravity seats, which is the only in its class, which has 14 different pressure points to give continuous support for your hips up to your shoulders, 10-way power adjustment for the driver, four-way manual for the passenger. The pattern, you know, I wish it was a little bit more sporty because when I am comparing this to the Rivals, it's better than Toyota. Toyota's looks a little bit more old and they are doing a more refresh in the interior and exterior for 2023. But the styling that you get here is still gonna be sport derived with that orange stitching that's on the dash. You're gonna get the silver that's going to make it look like a bi-level, matte black for your air vents. So it keeps a seamless segment and it's easy to clean too because when you get gloss black everywhere, I do like gloss black, don't get me wrong but it just keeps fingerprints. You'll have your climate control storage here, a USB-A and a USB-C with a 12 volt. The gear shifter is very unique because when you push that button right there on it, that puts it into a sport mode so you could really feel that VC turbocharged engine. Cup holders, a 16.9 ounce fits without any issue. 20 ounce will be max. Carbon fiber look and a storage area for your key fob. They add a touch of gloss black. It's going to be a little bit more firm to ride. I do like that we keep that contrast stitch open up inside it's gonna be pretty long not so wide and not so deep but you can fit plenty of storage inside it steering wheel square bottom three spoke multi-function paddle shifters and you got the cross stitch with that orange yet again gauge cluster digital reader in the center you can go through an array of information for the driver the vehicle gets great gas consumption you really just need to see how fast you're going and for your tire pressure monitor you're going to sit lower to the ground door panels are raised up and i like how they go into the dash it's going to be harder materials on the top you're going to get that soft materials with the contrast stitching the carbon fiber look near the grab handle one touch up and down just for the driver. Elbows is gonna be pretty soft. Storage, you could probably fit about two 16.9 ounce water bottles. So it is pretty efficient with that. We have a six speaker audio sound system and eight inch color display. It is touch derived, no navigation. We do have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, Bluetooth connectivity, switch it to reverse. You have your reverse camera with full trajectory and it expands to make it easy. Also in the gauge cluster, you can see your reverse sensors. So I do like that we're encompassed with Plenty of safety, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic, forward collision, pedestrian detection. Everything that you need is inside this vehicle, which puts it spot onto the segment. For the 2023, you're gonna get wireless Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately, Android Auto will still be plugged in. We do have a moonroof. Let's see how I look in the back. For the back seats, I'm at 36.7 inches of headroom, 35.2 inches of legroom, six foot three. I can fit without any issues. And you sit really comfortable back here. They did a great job with making the same functionality from the front into the back. Because when I'm going on a long journey, if I'm sitting back here, I can actually just sleep. The door panels are still raised up. I don't feel like I'm sitting over the hood. So I do like that because I am sitting higher than the front occupants. Cup holders in the center, a 20 ounce will fit. It's gonna be very soft here. You get a USB-A and a USB-C, only storage behind the passenger seat. Floor is not completely flat. Something that I do dislike because you really do need storage when you go into Toyota, Honda, or Hyundai, you're going to have it. Door panel, harder materials are gonna be pretty much all over. They do strip out all of that contrast stitching on the door panel. Storage in the door pocket, maybe two 16.9 ounce water bottles. Is it spot on? We're losing some storage capacity, but it does make up with the rear bench how comfortable it is because this is actually the most comfortable. I would say Toyota would be the second. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom is absolutely no issue, nor is legroom. I am sharing feet, butt, shoulder space. There's no air vents back here that's going to be blocked. So that is, I guess, a plus. You do feel the air circulate and it is a large cabin in the interior. Taking the 2022 Nissan Ultima 2.0 liter SR VC turbocharged engine. This is going to be not necessarily the most power derived underneath it, but the cool thing about this particular engine is the way they engineered it. It was 20 years in the making, and basically it goes to like a V6 when you're hitting high RPMs, so you're getting that type of gas consumption. When you're hitting lower RPMs, it's going to go as a four cylinder diesel, so that will be your gas consumption. So for an everyday use, and you're not pushing that little sport button there, you're going to get great gas consumption. Otherwise, 
you want it to go a little crazy, push that, you're gonna hit higher RPMs. It's not gonna filter so much in the exhaust note, which you'll see, but the way you sit in it, ground clearance, it's over five inches, so you do have enough there. The A-pillars, they're pushed back. I still do feel sporty in the interior, even comparing this to the Honda Accord 2.0 Turbo. Even though that has more power, you have kind of the same feel from the front. Now, obviously the dynamics are gonna change, which you're gonna see throughout the driving. If you're comparing it to the Hyundai Sonata, the inline will just take the cake out of all of them. But the price point of that also is going to escalate five to $10,000 more, and it's almost 300 horsepower. So it's really hard to put that in the segment. Otherwise, if you go to the standard turbo, you're under 200 horsepower, it has enough power underneath it that it stays planted and it's still a fun drive. The Toyota Camry, that one is going to flux between a four cylinder and a V6. The V6 is really where it's at for the optimal power underneath it. And if you really wanna go all out, you get the TRD. It lowers the suspension about 0.8 millimeters. So it gives a little bit more ruggedness, but they don't do anything for performance. That's the only disadvantage with that. So we're going to stop in the middle of the road here and give her a little go. and the brakes. It's smooth all the way you go. Now the engine note does filter in quite a bit, like I was saying, it's not going to be something throaty. I do like the engineering and the Xtronic CVT transmission is pretty spot on. It's obviously not going to be as engaged as an automatic transmission. As for the dynamics, you kind of feel it slide a little bit so it's not necessarily going to be so sporty in that attribute but it still does a fun job off the line and giving you that wow or fun to drive factor and i mean it's very smooth too these seats are the smoothest in the segment out of all of them because they're engineered to do so and that is something that when you go to Honda, Toyota, or even Hyundai, it doesn't matter what you spend, you're still not going to get zero gravity seats. You can only get that in the Nissan line. As for the length, you can see pretty decent behind you. You got blind spot monitoring and you're pretty much taken care of with all your safety. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is there anything more than that? I'd be taking this Ultima home. So starting off with the things that I like about the vehicle, the VC turbocharged engine, and I've said it a lot on my Nissan and Infiniti reviews. The engineering is just amazing because you are getting optimal gas consumption plus you still get a drive. The second thing that I like about it is it keeps the fun heritage. It's still very smooth with the suspension. The seat cushioning, whether you're in the driver, passenger, or in the back, is still going to be the most comfortable. Leg space, you have plenty of it and you never really have that tired feeling. Moving in and out, you can do so. So for maneuverability, you have it. Storage in the front, it's pretty decent. Just it's a little bit noisy as you can hear, but even comparing it to the rivals, it's pretty spot on. I will say that the most quiet would probably go to the Honda line and it's still going to depend on the size of the wheel that you get. The last thing that I like about it is the steering wheel. You get the flat bottom, you have to go to a near $40,000 price point or even higher in order to get this sport feel with the three spoke, the paddle shifters, it's sleek. It just makes the car feel a little bit more lively than the Honda and the Toyota only because of how much sport that they put on the driver. The three things that I dislike, we'll have to start off with, it is the slowest in the segment and it's not the cheapest in the segment either. Turn radius have more or less a stop point these are the nice things about these vehicles, about two lanes, here we go. It actually feels faster than the vehicle numbers project. The second thing that I dislike goes to the back seats because yet again, I know this is not a premium vehicle in the sense of luxury, but they do strip it out in the door panels and they just make it a little bit more plain. You're not going to get the same sporty segment in the back seats. It's just going to be a nice bench that you can rest. 
I like the comfort, but I also like the sport look. The last thing that I dislike is it's just a substantial amount of road noise. There's nothing to offset it. The sound dampening usually in Nissan is pretty good, but this one, and I get it because the price point, but still it'd be nice that they would make it a little bit more sealed up. Maybe make that exhaust note a little bit different instead of like a drone noise. So that way it just feels a little bit more alive. If it's me looking to buy the vehicle and I'm looking for the most performance Toyota is going to take the cake with the V6. If I'm looking for the most comfort, this is going to take the cake. Gas consumption plus I'm able to operate from a 4 to a 6. This one, that's the engineering that you got behind it. Everybody nowadays is not really so happy with CVT transmission. I don't necessarily see a problem with it. However, there is a more fun dynamic drive to a regular transmission. Longevity really depends on the service and how you treat the vehicle too. So you can't necessarily say, oh, they're just bad, this and that. A lot of people just don't like to service their vehicles. As for servicing a vehicle, Nissan will be the least expensive. I like to thank Moss Nissan for giving us this 2022 Nissan Altima SR for our car review if you're already a subscriber thank you for being part of the hawkeye community if not click the next video the subscribe button check out the details merchandise website and everything we do here in hawkeye rides